Okay, good morning. Today we're going to be working on the second lab in our new book. It's called Section 3 Maps and Computers. You're going to be given a grid of numbers in order to recognize numbers of elevation and use them to make contour lines for a map. When you are done, you're going to understand how contour lines represent elevation, relief, and slope. So yesterday you did the Ed Puzzle and you saw the contour lesson that explained a little bit about the contour lines. If you took your time and participated in that and uh, actually listened and did well, you will find today's lab should be relatively easy. So we're moving on to this page here. Introduction. Scientists use the term topography to describe the shape of a geographic area, and you can read along with me here. A topographic map is a map showing the surface features of an area, providing accurate information on the elevation, relief, and slope of the ground surface of a region. To represent elevation, relief, and slope on a topographic map, map makers use contour lines that connect points of equal elevation. Contour lines are always drawn on maps as seen from above. If you were hiking and using a map with contour lines, you could follow along one of those lines and you'd never gain or lose elevation. I do this all the time when I'm out hiking in the Adirondacks or even in the Rocky Mountains. The difference in elevation between one contour line and the next is always, is always the same on any map. That is called the contour interval. So once again, the, line between, the, the amount of elevation you go up between two lines is always the same. The contour interval is important to know when contouring, or which is, means drawing lines of a grid numbers that connect points of equal value. Connecting uh, contouring helps determine the shape of an area. A few rules for contouring and reading topographic maps include contour lines never divide or cross one another. Although on steep cliffs, they may seem to appear to run together. They're very close if they're, if they're a cliff. Contour lines are farther apart on gentle slopes than they are on steep slopes. Contour lines never stop in the middle of a map or grid. They either form a closed loop or they run off the edge of the map or grid. The contour interval always stays the same on a given map. Elevations on one side of a contour line are higher than elevations on the other side of that line, okay? Which means the elevation on this side of the line is higher than this side of the line, for example. Okay, so this is an example right here of contouring. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here on that. And you can see that this line runs between 44 and 46, so this is uh, on 45, this is 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, and then you connect the line, which we're gonna be doing today. And this is 50, between 47 and 52 is 50, between 48 and 53, 50, 50, 50. So every point on this line is 50. Every point on that line, and this would be 55. Every point on this line is 55, and every point on this line is 60. So you can see you're going uphill as you cross those lines. And then if you look at a cross section, that means if you look at a cross section, and you're looking from the side, there's your hill. There's your, that's what it looks like from the side. That's called a profile. All right, so the first directions are, we're going to practice contouring with grid A and B. Being aware the contour intervals, hint, start with the highest elevation. So we're going to do a contour interval of 10. So what's our highest number here? If you said 50, you're right. So we're going to put a little circle around 50 because that's our highest elevation. And then we're going to go down 10. So what's 50 minus 10? That's right, 40. So we're going to put, I, I like to do this, I put a dot on all the 40s. So there's all the 40s I know of. But there's no 40 between 30 and 45. So it's going to be 30, 40, 45. So it's going to be between 30 and 45, right here, a little closer to 45. We need to find another 40 between this 30 and 45, probably right here. Once you get those dots, oh, and right here too, between 30 and 45, you're going to make a circle and connect 30 and 45. It's going to be a 40 right there. Okay, and then we take 40 and we subtract 10. We have 30. So we know we have a 30 here. We know we have a 30 here. 35 and 40 is 
Is there going to be a 30 between these? No. How about between 20 and 35? Yes. So we're going to have a 30 here. So this is where it's going to run off the page. It's going to come back on the page here. 35 and 40. No, is there any 30 here? Nope. 20 and 35. Is there a 30 in between these two? Yep. So it's going to come back off the page again. And look, here's another 30. So it's coming back on the page a little bit, kind of right there. Oh, 20 and 35. There's a 30. And there's a 30. No 30s between these two. So it's going to come up off like this. This is a tricky one. Here's a 30. 35. There's a 20 and 35, so there's going to be a 30 there. It's going to be a 30 here. So really, I mean, you could kind of imagine it's going to run like right here. Between 20 and 35. Between 20 and 35, there's a 30. So 35 and 20. So it really is going to run right on the edge of the page here. So there's your 30. So that's, that's kind of an interval of 10. So now we're going to go over here to grid B and we're going to do intervals of 5. So we're going to find our highest point against the same, pretty much the same grid, a little different here. So we're going to go 50, and now we're going to go 45. 45, 45, 45, 45. So there's our 45. We go to go down 5, so we're going to do our 40s. 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. This is a pretty easy one. And then 35. Notice it's coming off the page, coming back on the page, going off the page, coming back on the page, going off. So these are imaginary circles somewhere out here somewhere. You don't have to draw them. Just understand they do continue in an imaginary space out here. And then 30, just on the edges. So there's our contour lines of intervals of five. So you can go lowest elevation up to the highest peak right in the middle. Okay. So now our next step. Use the rules for contouring above to complete the topography map on the following page. Hint, the highest elevation is 90 and the contour interval is five. So we got to remember that. The highest elevation is 90 and the contour interval is 5. When you're finished, you're going to try to use the information from the map to draw a cross profile or a side view of the area mapped. Then we're going to cut and paste that topography map in your Science Interactive Notebook. I'm going to have you actually go back here to the notes. And we're going to do maps and computers. And I want you to paste that map right on the back of this. So I want you to paste today's on the maps and computers. Because you notice that talks about topographic maps, contour lines, contour angles. So when we're done, you're pasting it there. It would be a great spot. All right, so let's go back. And now remember, if you're having trouble today, because I'm not going to do all of the contouring, we're going to look something like this. But you can't just copy this, because you, you've got to really look at this map. So you have to understand. So here's our thing. And remember, our contour interval is... 5, and it said in the last page the highest elevation is 90. So we're going to find the 90. I found it. Did you? Right here. So that's our highest elevation. So we're going to go down by 5. So our next step is which number? 90 minus 5 is 85. So kind of look, two numbers, 80, 90, there's an 85 right in the middle. 85, there it is. 84 and 87, 85 is going to be right next to it. See, 85. 79, 83, 84, 88. 87, 84, so those are going to be an 85. Another one here, 85. There's an 85. 85 tricky so it looks like we have our circle just double check 85 85 back down here and again it's a, a little bit of an estimating so there's our 85 now we're gonna go down to 80 so we're looking for 80s start with the 80s you see do the ones you know 
there's all the 80s I see. And now we're going to go in between numbers, 85 and 78, there's going to be 80 right here. 85 and 77, there's going to be an 80 in between. 79 and 84, is going to be an 80. 80 and 83, there's our 80. Where else are our 80s? 76 and 83, there's going to be an 80 here. 83 and 79, there's going to be an 80 right next to 79. There's an 80. 81, 75, no, um, right here. I think we have them all, so let's take a look if we draw that line. 79, 85, there's going to be an 80 right there. Just kind of look at it first to make sure it makes sense. Now the lines can't be straight. They're not jagged. This is a mountain, so we're going to make them curved. So we're not going eh, 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 eh. So make sure you're making them curved lines. All right, so what you're going to do is continue this out, going down by fives all the way through. Okay? And then I'm going to show you really quickly how to do a little contour interval or a cross profile, and that's down here. So in just a second, I'll come back. I'm going to hit pause. I'm going to draw another map here on the side and show you how to do that. Okay, so just to give you a, a, how to do a contour, um, a profile of a contour. So this is a little map I made, and it goes from 60 to 0. What I like to do is take a piece of folded paper, and what I'm going to do is place this in a straight line. And I'm going to draw a line first right through here. And we're going to do a contour from A to B right here. So on this line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, that's a zero contour. Make a little hashtag here where the line hits the paper. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 60. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 0. So there I have that. Okay? And I'll be right back again. I'm going to do the box just like we had on the other page. Okay, so now I've created this, this box kind of like you have on this page here. All right, cross profile. And this list side is the contour intervals, and that shows us our height. Now I'm going to take that paper where I did this, and I'm going to bring it back down here to the box. Now watch this, this is pretty cool. Because at this point right here, the elevation is 10. So there's our 10, so I'm going to come across, put a dot. Here it's 20, so I'm going to go straight up and over. So here's our 20. Over to here, 30, so I'm going to estimate, I'm going to come up and over. There's my 30. Here's my 40. You can use a ruler or a straight edge just to get these spots if you want to be more accurate. Here's 50. Here's 60. Here's 60 again. Here's 50. Here's our 30, here's our 20, here's our 10, and then here's our 0. So there we go. And now we're going to connect these with a smooth line. Don't be too crazy, don't do like waves, just kind of nice and gradual. And obviously it's going to go up a little and come down. And you are just that quickly, you just made a cross side profile view of your of your final picture here. So this is a bird's eye view of this, and that's looking from the side. So you're going to be doing the same with this. Once you get done, you want to take a cross profile. And what I would do is you're going to measure the line length down here. So you got the beginning and the end. And what you're going to do is I would do your cross profile from here to here, right across the peak. See the 90? And I would kind of just draw maybe a line across here. And then you're going to do 90, 85, 80, 85, 80. And keep going down, it's going to be 60 to 80, 
bring it down here, right to here, and you're going to start at 60, and then wherever it says that you put your, do your cross profile, and you're going to get a cross profile, what it looks like here. Now if you want to do a cross profile this way or whatever, I would just go from here to here, that's going to make your life easier. Bring it down, go back and review pieces of this video if you need. When you are finished, you're going to again cut this, you can cut this out and paste it on the notes titled Maps and Computers. If you have a three ring binder, feel free to rip that, that page out and put it in your three ring binder. If not, go ahead and leave it right here. And then reminder, this one here, Models of Earth, this lab you did should have been done the other day, will go on the back. All right. Thank you so much. And I uh, do appreciate it. Have a good day. Okay, after Wright Peak, we hiked up to Avalanche Pass, Algonquin Peak, sorry, which is the second highest peak in the Adirondacks. Uh, one, the only higher peak is Mount Marcy, which is over here. But we're back over here at Wright Peak, near Algonquin Peak, and 5,114 feet. And the picture you're gonna see of uh, Grace and I standing on top, with, and in the background, you're gonna see uh, Colden Mountain right here. And you're going to see Marcy way in the background of touching the clouds. So you're going to see that from behind us in the view. And then um, following that picture, we're going to show you uh, one of the steepest trails in the Adirondacks. And I want you to see how many lines you're passing as you go down this. Look at this. Each of these lines, and I'm going to tell you that contour interval in just a second. So each one of those lines is 20 feet. Okay and one inch is a mile. So this whole section here is just over a mile and every single line is 20 feet. So when you look at these maps, you say, oh, that looks like an easy trail, but then you see all those lines, that's a very steep trail. And then following that, we're gonna hike up this valley. You notice you're not crossing many lines. So you're hiking flat up this valley. But take a look on either side of this valley. See how steep, how packed the lines are? This is called Avalanche Pass. It's like two, this is so steep, the, you're gonna see that the wall of rock goes right into the water here, and you actually have to walk on the side of the rocks. And we'll show you how that works in a minute. And then you're gonna see a couple views from the beginning or the end of the lake looking backwards, and you can see both cliffs on either side. So these are very important when you're planning hikes or if you ever got lost in the woods and you have one of these maps, you can kind of look and see. You can find the different mountains. You can kind of see where you're at and uh, help you get away. So if you're ever going to learn one type of map, a topographic map is the one that could actually save your life. So I hope you enjoy the pictures and the uh, little virtual tour and uh, get out there and hike.